friends, thanks for, for coming to this meeting and we will open it out so people have a chance to ask questions uh, or make points of their own after I've spoken. But when the trade unionists and socialists against cuts decided to contest this election and when I agreed to stand, then it was in order to give an alternative to austerity. We are standing to oppose these attacks on our living standards. We are opposing the onslaught of cuts and privatisation against our vital services. And we are standing to give a voice back to the millions of ordinary working class and in fact middle class people who are saying that we won't pay for a crisis that we didn't cause. The fault for this crisis lies not with us, but with the super rich and with their system of capitalism. A system that puts the profits of a tiny minority ahead of the needs of the mass of people. It is workers that create all the wealth in society through the work that we do. But the bosses underpay us. They keep some of that wealth for themselves as their profit. And when we can no longer afford, for that reason, to buy back all the things that they're trying to sell us, then as Jorge explained, we are encouraged to get up to our eyeballs in debt in order that we can keep spending, in order that they can keep making money at our expense. And instead of investing that money usefully, then they gambled their profits in the casinos that were the finance industry, where bankers gorged themselves on fat bonuses, where the champagne flowed like water, where it, where it seemed for a long time as if anybody could make money, provided that you had plenty of it to begin with. But it was fictitious, it was a house of cards, and when it came crashing down, it was us that they turned to. When people could no longer afford to keep paying that debt uh, that we were getting in, when the bankers discovered that much of the money they thought they had was fictitious, then it was our money that was used to bail them out. And now, and as a consequence, we are being told that we can no longer afford to care for our elderly, while those bankers' bonuses continue to roll in, while big businesses continue to profit. What we have is a government who are a coalition of millionaires. They are acting in the interests of billionaire bankers and big businessmen, and they're trying to steal from us everything that we have got. Theirs is a program of Robin Hood in reverse, of taking our money and of giving it to the super rich. So they're privatising our services, things like our National Health Service, in order that their mates can have another market for them to exploit. So they're driving down our pay, our pensions, our conditions at work, so that they can profit <coughs> even more off our backs. So they're attacking our trade union organisation, our rights at work, so that we are less easily able to stand up to them. And so they're trying to divide us. They're attacking women's rights, for example. They are vilifying immigrants, the disabled and the unemployed. And the effect of this austerity is, of course, also being felt locally here in Bristol. The government is cutting the funding that they're giving to local councils, Bristol included. And that leaves councillors like our own with a choice. <coughs> Are they going to stand up for the people that they're supposed to represent and protect those services, as I would? Or are they going to essentially do the government's dirty work uh, and pass on the pay? If their budget is being cut, are they going to pass those cuts on? And sadly, and in common with every other council in the country, then Bristol's Lib Dem administration is doing the second of those options. So they're cutting council jobs. They've cut uh, the funding that they give, for example, to voluntary organisations. They've cut many other things, most shamefully so far perhaps, is the announcement that they are to close eight care homes and seven daycare centres in this city. That those cuts will leave 200 elderly and vulnerable people without council residential care and at the mercy of private sector companies where profits come first and care comes second. And that's an attack not just upon uh, the current residents, current service users and current staff. This is an attack, in my opinion, upon everyone in this city. Who knows at what point in the future we might need those services and we will want council-run and owned services to be there to provide for us. It should be intolerable that we are attempting to pay for a crisis out of the pockets of some of the elderly and most vulnerable people of this city. It is intolerable to me, but who is offering opposition to this onslaught? Is it coming from the Labour Party? Well, sadly, I don't think it is. Ed Miliband's latest thing he's talked about is One Nation. 
They are rehashing uh, a 140 year old idea uh, that actually came from the, the Tory party. But we don't live in one nation. You look at the news that more and more people in this country are having to turn to food banks in order that they can feed their families each month, on the one hand. You compare that with the news that these energy companies have been fixing prices in order to make billions of pounds. Those two groups don't inhabit the same nation. They may as well live on a whole different planet. The class interests of the bosses on the one hand, who are trying to drive down our wages and our living standards, and the, the, the interests of workers on the other, who are trying to defend our living standards. They are fundamentally opposed. They cannot be represented within one and the same party. So why is it Miliband's talking about one nation, about being a party to represent everybody? It's because if you represent just 1% of the population, but you rely upon the other 99% to vote you in, then you've got to find a way of obscuring that of making it seem like you're friendly and you're not there for everyone. And so for Miliband that's talking about one nation, as for David Cameron, it was claiming that we're all in it together, up until the point when that became too hypocritical uh, even for him to say. Sadly, I think Labour are another party of big business. Fundamentally, they will continue the same programme of austerity that we have at the moment. And every single Labour council in this country uh, has made cuts. Uh, in the, the speech by Miliband that I, I mentioned where he talked about One Nation, you had to look hard to find anything concrete. There was only one actual promise in there and that was for tough settlements for public services that will make life harder for those that work in them and those that use them. That's us, that's everybody in this room. Did the trade unions set up a Labour Party a hundred years ago in order that it make, make, might make our lives harder? No, uh, they didn't, and it's a pity uh, that they aren't any longer uh, standing up for us. If you look at Labour's campaign in this election here in Bristol, then it's also been very light on policy. What they uh, do say is, is good uh, as far as it goes. Things like the, limit, uh, the living wage, they're all right, although they are uh, very limited. But actually what they're not saying speaks much louder, in my opinion, than what they are. They make no mention of fighting the cuts, mm. nor of how they're going to find the £25 million pounds of savings uh, that are being asked of the new mayor. Now I'll speak about a couple of the other parties standing, because Respect have also spoken against the cuts that are being made. But I'd say that they offer no strategy in order to stop them. Their candidate has said that the new mayor must balance the budget, but the funding for that budget is being cut year on year by the Tory government. And so balancing the budget on that basis can only mean balancing it on the basis of a reduced budget, i.e. making cuts and passing on the pay. And likewise, the Green opponent has said that the, the council's chief legal officer would refuse to sign off any budget that wasn't balanced, and therefore there's no point us trying to take this stand. Well, since when did democracy mean that we let unelected officials on over £100,000 a year take uh, the decisions about the fate of this city? So if there's nobody else that's going to stand up for us, that's going to stand up for our services, our living standards, for our class, then we're going to have to do it ourselves. And as Dave has explained, the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition was established uh, as a coming together of the Rail Union, the RMT, of other leading trade unionists, of socialist parties, including uh, the Socialist Party, which I'm a member of, including the SWP, uh, and including a whole number of other uh, campaigners, was established in order to give a voice back to the working class in electoral politics. And how can we do that in this election? Well, firstly, by my standing to be a workers' mayor on a workers' wage, I think it's important. I don't think you can represent people unless you understand uh, to live, uh, to how it is to live as they do. I'm fed up of hearing pro politicians who are crying crocodile tears about the tough choices that they have to make <laughs> when it is us and not them uh, that feel the impact of those decisions. So we're standing to protect our services. <laughs> My first priority, if elected, would be to reverse those care closures that I have spoken of. We're speaking, uh, we're standing to give young people uh, a good start and a good chance in life. And I'd be looking to bring in a local replacement to the education maintenance allowance, 
a payment of just £30 a week uh, to, to further education to college students in order to cover costs of, of transport and other things that was cut by the Tories. There's other local councils in the country that have brought in local replacement to that. Why is it that the teenagers of Bristol should miss out? We're standing to oppose privatisation and to champion public ownership. And I would bring, bring things like the refuse service back into public ownership. I would return academy schools to local democratic control. Now it seems that a number of my opponents in this election have learned something that I've learned over the years, that you always get a good response in Bristol to attacking first bus. But for me, that's not just a case of attacking them out of one corner of your mouth, while well, you're doing deals with them out of the other. If you're to oppose First Bus and the other companies that are bleeding us dry, it's got to be a consistent call that we need an alternative of public ownership of our that transport network. So it's ours, so that we're seeing the benefits of any investment that we're making. And so the decisions on how that service is run are made democratically based upon what Bristolians need, not by unelected board members based upon what makes companies like First the greatest profit. We are standing to create jobs by a programme of useful public works. I'm talking about things like building council houses, like refurbishing the existing ones, in order not only to meet a dying need for those housing, but in order to create work as well. It's no use waiting for the private sector to create jobs. Despite every giveaway that this government has given them, Big business are still sitting on £750 billion in this country that they could be investing to create work, but they're not because they'll only invest it based upon what makes them the biggest profits. We're standing to challenge sexism and to make the city safer. And I'd close strip clubs and massage parlours. I would ban sexist advertising from billboards. There's many other things that I could say about why I'm standing uh, and what I'd like to do. But I'll move on in the short amount of time I have left to address the, the key question, really, which is how we'd go about funding this. I've said I don't think that can be done on the basis of accepting the budget cuts that are being moved by the condemned government. Instead, I would base a budget based not upon their demands, but upon what Bristol needs, upon protecting our services. And then we would have to campaign alongside the ordinary people of this city to win back the money that's been stolen from us. It was a stand of that nature that was successful in Liverpool, as Dave has described, in the 80s. It was a stand successfully taken by popular council uh, before that. Now this government might say that there's no money to fund these services, but when it came to bailing out the banks, they found the money. When it came to replacing Trident nuclear missiles, they found the money. When it came to funding tax cuts for the rich, then they found the money when those people don't even pay the tax that they are supposed to. But this is not a government that's going to listen to reason. This is not an argument that we can win by the force of will alone. It must be backed with protests and with strikes by ordinary people standing together in order to demand uh, that our living standards are not cut. It must be backed by an active campaign to stop the cuts, to win back, as I've said, what's been stolen from us. <coughs> We've heard already mentioned the general strike taking place across southern Europe today and the steps being taken toward general strike action here in Britain, which we're now closest to uh, at any time since 1926 when we last had a general strike. And unfortunately, I think that this growing militancy is going to be what's needed and will have to continue whatever the result of the election tomorrow. But that fight back will be stronger if it's backed with a po voice in politics that's supporting workers when they take that action and not condemning them. That that fight back will be strengthened if there is in the office of Bristol Mayor an anti-cuts activist who can stand up and advocate and support campaigns against the privatisation of things uh, that are beyond our, our control uh, of, as, of the Mayor. Things like our National Health Service uh, and many others. And if that's what you want, then I think you have to vote for me. You have to vote for trade unionists and socialists against cuts in this election. But I'd say more. The fight has to continue, whatever the result. The people in this room should join that fight back to actively. Join your trade union. Push for more action. Join the Bristol and District Anti-Cuts Alliance. 
And I'd say also that people should join the Socialist Party. But I'll finish very briefly uh, with this point, which is I've been described during this campaign as being an extremist, that what we're standing for is on the fringe of politics. I would disagree with that. Actually, what we're asking for is incredibly modest. We're not asking for uh, the, the millionaire lifestyles that some of our opponents have. All we ask for is a comfortable life, the chance to work if we're able to, a bit of security if we can't because we're unemployed or because we get sick, a bit of dignity and the ability to be looked after in our old age, the chance to give our children the same or better opportunities than we ourselves have had. That is all we ask, it isn't so much, but that we're being told that we can no longer afford this while the profits of big business are still sacrosanct, that is an indictment of the system that we live under and of the priorities of most of the politicians. And so actually, although what I'm saying is reasonable, it is also radical. We do need a radical alternative to those politicians. We do need to stand up and if we have to fight for those things, then fight we will. But that would be so much stronger if there's a political backing to that. That is why the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition has been founded. That is why I'm standing for them. And that is why I hope tomorrow we can send the strongest possible message that we will no longer stand for these cuts, that we will not pay for a crisis that we didn't cause, that we will stand together, we will fight back, and we will win. Thank you.